All right. Praise the Lord, everyone. Here on Thursday evening now. And the Lord's blessed for us to be able to go in here and finish up the last two chapters of the Gospel of John, chapters 20 and 21. And um, close out the teaching on the Gospel of John. Amen. One of the best to me of the Gospels, John being the closest one to Jesus of all his disciples. There's just so much that you get out of the Gospel of John. And um, we'll see here how John refers to himself as that other disciple. He, I mean, he's talking about himself, and I'll point those things out to you as we come to him as I have. Let's open with prayer. Heavenly Father, we just come before you in Jesus' name, asking you, God, to bless this word, bless the reading of this word, God. Allow us to receive it, Lord God, understand it, and walk in it, Lord God, and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, praise God. We're starting out here now, John chapter 20, verse 1. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runneth, and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved. John talking about himself right there. That's one of the places where he's talking about himself. And saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and ran, and they went forth in that other disciple and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came to the sepulchre. And he stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. So John didn't go in, he stops at the door. Then cometh Simon Peter, following him, and went into the sepulchre, and seeth the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also the other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own home, but Mary stood without the sepulchre, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre, and see two angels in white, sitting one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. Verse 14. And when, the, the, and when she had thus said, she turned herself back and she saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was him. So she saw Jesus standing there and she didn't know it was him. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary... She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she, what she had seen, that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. And Jesus saith unto them, or said Jesus unto them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so I send you. <clears throat> and when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive you the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see his hands, the print, 
of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again, his disciples within were within and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut and stood in the midst of them and said, peace be unto you. Now, look at the, what is going on here. He's got a physical human body. They can see he looks like himself. He still has the scars from what happened. But yet he can pass through doors closed and walls. So that he and he's also a human solid. And we'll see it part where he eats food with them, too. So this glorified state that he's in is what we're going to have when we're resurrected. And we're called to meet him in the air. That's the Bible says we'll be like him and ever be with him. So we'll have that same type of body, physical yet spiritual that it can pass through walls and do things and be caught up in the air, but also eat food and 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 and, and have a physical portion or physical being to it as well. Something that I don't think we'll you know can understand until we get there and it happens. Amen. And and then um, then he says unto Thomas, Reach hither thy finger and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name amen in chapter 21 verse 1 after these things jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the sea of tiberias and on this wise showed he himself they were together simon peter and thomas called didymus and nathaniel of canaan and galilee and the sons of zebedee and two other of his disciples simon peter saith unto them i go fishing they say unto him we also go with thee they went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and night, and then and that night, excuse me, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. You see, he had a way, and you'll see in other places too, how he, he could hide himself from their understanding until he was ready for them to understand and know who he was. It's a revelation. The light bulb had to be turned on. They had to, their eyes had to be opened to who he was there. Okay. They did not know it was him. Verse 5. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net then on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it in for the multitude of fish. He cast over there and did what Jesus said, and the, and the net was so full they couldn't even pick it up. They just had to drag it to the shore. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. And as soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid there on and bread. And Jesus saith unto them, Bring the fish which thou have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to the land full of great fish, a hundred and fifty and three, hundred and fifty three fish in that net. How about that? When the Lord tells you where to throw your line, you're gonna catch fish, amen. All right. Okay, that's a lot of fish. And yet the net was not broken. Verse twelve Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. So when they had dined, Jesus saith unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith unto him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? 
He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thine hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he signifying by what death he should glorify God, and he was going to be crucified like Christ. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved, talking about himself again, John talking about himself here, following, which also leaned on the breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that portrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do. Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry until I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then went his, this saying abroad among the brethren that, that disciple should not die, yet Jesus said not unto him, He shall not die, but if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? This is the disciple which testified the things and wrote things, things and were not, and we know that his testimony is true. And this is John talking about himself. Now I want you to a little history about John for some of that you may not know. John was the only disciple that did, if he died, it was of natural causes. They tried to, if you read the Fox Book of Martyrs, they tried to boil John in oil twice. They've tried to kill him several times and then exile him to Isle of Patmos to die where God gave him the revelation of the book of Revelation and he still lived. So this this man whom Jesus loved, who was closest of all to Jesus, also lived the longest and didn't die the way the rest of them did. Though they tried to kill him. Imagine being bold and all and surviving. The, the life of John is just miraculous and amazing. Anyway, this is the disciple which testified to these things and wrote these things. And we know that his testimony is true. In verse 25, and there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written, every one, I suppose even the world itself, could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Now, that's, watch this, what he's saying. Let's understand what he's telling us here. He said, if everything Jesus ever did, just in those three and a half years of his ministry, had been written in the books, the planet could not hold all the books. That's how much Jesus did. That's how many miracles he did. That's how many, much teaching he did in his short time. That it would be more books than the earth could hold is what this disciple is saying. Okay? Which tells us what we do have in the Bible, the book we have now, is very important. Okay? So many other things that took place that weren't written, he gave us the things that we needed to go by. Okay? To live by and be saved by. Very important to understand what he's saying here. That what we read is not everything Jesus did. He did so much more that it wasn't even written down. So many things that didn't even get written down that he did. That there would be so many books that had to be written of all that Jesus had done. Both miracles and teaching and those things that had taken place before and after his resurrection. Okay? Very important we understand how important the word of God is to us. What we do have. This one Bible we call it with 66 books in it. Okay? And what 29 of them the New Testament. We need to understand and know beyond a shadow of a doubt. That this word of God is very, very important. We need to understand those. You know, if you don't believe in God, you don't think he's real. That's that's fine. Then you don't have to worry about it. OK, doesn't matter for you anyway. But if you do believe in God and you say God is real or if somebody's God's dealing with you or you're wondering if he's real, then you need to know what this book says and you need to be obedient to it. OK, Jesus gave us his words, gave the words to his disciples and apostles, and they gave it to us. Amen. And we live by it today. If we believe God's real, if we believe, then we must believe his word is real. And we must follow, believe, and obey the word of God. Amen. This has been the Gospel of John 21 chapters. We've been through all the chapters in eight parts. Eight different lessons. 
Very good book. Go back and read it again. Take the videos and read along with it and follow what we talked about. And double see for yourself that everything we say is true. I don't tell you anything that's not straight out of the Word of God. I go to the Scriptures, okay? Very important to me that I follow what the Word He gave us. If this book was all He decided we should have and all the rest of the stuff wasn't written down, then this must be the nucleus of what he wants us to know and understand. So every word in it's important. Amen. Lord bless you. And as always, if you've got any questions, you feel free to get in touch with me. We'll sit down. We'll do a Bible study. Anything you need to do. If you want to get closer to God, you want to be saved, you want to go to heaven and not hell, the way to do it is through the word of God. Amen. All right. Lord bless. Appreciate everybody.